is. Welcome everybody. This that you see behind my head, Dave, you asked about this. Mm -hmm. It is on the front cover of, let's see if I can get it in the camera, right? With this bat virtual background. Well, heck with the virtual background for a second. Let's just get that out of here and go to none. All right, this. This is a scene. This is a Caucasian male. This is a blue skin a human from another world. She's named Melina. This is a little Dren creature. He's silica based. You'll meet him tonight. This is a master teacher named Ramu. And this is taking place over 100,000 years ago on Earth. This actually is when the poles changed, the continents were destroyed, new ones raised up. This had to do with the Galactic Alliance involvement back then. Um, You'll find it out. The parallel, but this is the first time on any published anything on Earth where this is really shown. The structure. It's multi-dimensional. It's spherical. It has layers covering the spectrum of light. The white core is made of energy that comes from the source behind all life. It does not consider it a self as a supreme being. That's wrong thinking right from the start. Where we're talking about in this, we will do, not in this journey, but in a, a, a guided group journey, which I want to set up with you all for another time this next week, if possible. And we will call it Journey to Source. We will be going through the same process we'll go through today, except we'll be going all the way up through the lower planes, past what some esoteric groups call the void, like Buddhists who think that's the realm of the Supreme Being. It isn't. I've guided three Buddhist monks beyond that void now, not to get them out of what they believe in, but to bring consciousness to it and their ability to understand that they can go further, but only if they can remember how to see what's up there. Because the omnipresent power that's out in space behind that aurora borealis that appears black to human eyes Human eyes on Earth are twin-stranded DNA, and they cannot see into a high enough spectrum because that black area in space is actually a white golden light everywhere. That means that when we're out of our bodies as the real being we are, the first thing that I get across to people that changes them forever because you have the courage to come here to change yourself. That's why you're here. Despite what was done to you by tyrants in the past that put you on earth with no memory, the, the atma is what beings from other worlds call the spherical nature of our true being, is spherical. It doesn't look like one of these. This is not what's made in the image of source at all. It's that. And we all still live there and we still have that is who we are and how we operate. Those layers have teardrop shaped self-evolving, self-luminous, higher faculties in all those layers. And they represent the various planes or dimensions of creation. The real truth is that we all began before the lower worlds were even built. And we are responsible, all of us collectively, for the condition of this planet and how things did not work out. The original creation played around with the idea of good and evil as an experiment. And it's a failed experiment. It never worked. When people started playing in the lower dimensions and running bodies, after a while, after a few billion years, they forgot so much of what they used to know. It made them more vulnerable and more vulnerable and more vulnerable until they were caught. In other words, vulnerable to be caught, killed, stuffed in a body on Earth with no memory. The good thing is that this kind of thing is no longer being done on Earth. Little gray abductions and reptilians in bases underground were very few. They've been removed from our solar system 25 years ago. That's how far behind the times the UFO and extraterrestrial and disclosure communities are. They're stuck, still talking about cow mutilizations and gray abductions. Haven't been any of those in 25 years. This was not done by people on Earth. And if they hadn't done it, this place would have gone up in nuclear war in 1950, the first time. 
There have been 12 different times when nuclear war, the button was pushed to go to nuclear, nuclear war between the former Soviet Union and the U.S. And each time, their launch computers were shut down from space. That means these beings aren't interested in running our governments or taking over like tyrants. But they won't allow us to blow ourselves up because that would harm billions of lives in parallel and higher dimensions that are accessed through certain locations on Earth. And we don't have that right. We've never had that right to blow this place up and harm life elsewhere. Most of the worlds outside of Earth, the few tyrant systems that are contained these days, there are no wars taking place in our galaxy anywhere. Now, that's a long story that goes back into the Parallel Time Trilogy, goes into the Emerald Doorway where this image is first shown. It goes into the second book, Guardians of the Ancient One, or Prime Creator or Source, and Journey to the Center of the Universe. And Journey to the Center of the Universe is not about a journey to the center of the physical universe. It's not about that. The Sayers Agenda is about what's taking place that is different, that's never happened before, out among the spacefaring races and their master teachers beyond Earth, that is making it possible for them to begin to work with people here to unaberrate them. And when I say unaber, I mean get rid of subconscious implanted fear, terrorizing programs that say something like this. If you try to remember this, we'll kill you and eat you alive again. Secondary implants, which is what this journey is about, is about getting rid of those implants on three lifetimes that you had. They were absolutely beautiful, no negative, no war. They're selected randomly because in those lives you had far higher IQs, a higher genetic form of human or humanoid, hundreds of thousands, even several millions of years ago, even part of the Galactic Alliance where you knew how to fly spaceships and travel among the stars. If these have a little artificially implanted program that says we'll kill you again and eat you, secondary implants and where they are and how they're removed are not your experiences. They're artificially, they're implanted terror. Primary implant is one where you were actually killed and put here. Which means the reason you don't remember anything when you're born growing up is because there is a subconscious terror. It's not in the body on Earth. Sorry, Scott, say that again. The primary implant is what? It's, it's an implant is, is a primary implant is something that happened to you where you were vulnerable one way or another, were caught by a tyrant race, usually tortured and killed and stuffed in a body. They can't put an implant in that. And implants can't go into the atma, what we really are, because it's non-nuclear, it's non-atomic. The energy out in space that we see through space subtle telescope images, what they call toroidal energy or zero point energy, quantum physicists, is the energy of the universe. But they know it's not nuclear or atomic. It has no atoms, no molecules. It's finer than all other matter, and it exists in just a vast amount. It's designed to support things that create electromagnetic fields around them to float in it, like planets and moons and suns and stars. They are round for a reason. They're round because they are made in the image of their creators, or creator, if you will. But what we are is spherical. And so planetary objects and bodies throughout creation are round, at least ones that can sustain life. The moon around Earth is a dead moon. This is not natural. It is not normal. It circles the orbit without turning at all on its axis, which is in physics completely impossible. The gravity of the Earth and the sun and their planet should have it turning some way. It does not move at all. We always shows us the same face. So when they say about the dark side of the moon and classified space program on the other side, if it's always facing away from us, nobody can see what they're doing there. Not with radio telescopes, not with astronomical or optical telescopes. What's going on there cannot be detected. So when we look at the moon, 
it is a body that should have an atmosphere. It affects people in a negative way during a full moon when the whole moon is lit up. But that affects the water on Earth and the water in our bodies. H2O is an incredibly important element that has properties people on Earth are just beginning to find out they never knew existed. Now, Professor Gerald Pollack of Washington State University, who I've met, has a foremost expert on the qualities of water and the multidimensional capable of it, the capability. It can be store information like a computer. It's piezoelectric. It can be charged positively or negatively like quartz. And it is a telepathic medium. It means us as atmas awake can communicate through the ocean to other worlds. There are certain shamans on earth that know how to do this. But who would listen to a bunch of ignorant peasants? Hmm? They don't talk about it much because they know they would be ignored anyway. Some of these tribes know they came from the stars. They carry it in their lineage and their that word of mouth passed down for thousands of years. So it's more of a, a social thing now. They don't really know or remember how to connect with it as an experience, but they know it was their history. There is no living conscious humanoid life on Earth that exists that originally uh, developed here. Cro-Magnon, Neanderthal, that's just theory, it's crap. You know, they talk about theoretically how we came from the oceans and little amoebas got up and crawled as fish and they got on their little arms and then they evolved to reptiles and humans just sprung out of the ground after that. Humans are one of the oldest races. They were created or brought into existence for Atlas to run higher genetic forms billions of years ago. The Say rays are a race of humans. They're very tall, at least they were. 18 to 25 feet tall. There have been skeletons three and a half million years old found by archaeologists, Christian archaeologists in this case. And it, because they were human and gigantic, some of them 25 feet tall, they were immediately classified. This was started at the end of World War II by 35 countries on planet Earth to keep people feeling safe, to make them baby boomers, so that they would develop society, fix a broken world in World War II, and think that their militaries can protect them. Eisenhower met with several groups, one tyrant, one not so much. I mean, not tyrant at all. And that was under off-world treaty, scared the hell out of them. Five-star general coming out of World War II, meeting aliens that had technology so far advanced of us, if they wanted to kick our ass in five minutes, they could. So they classified it. They made it a higher classification than the hydrogen bomb. And for their own terrorizing reasons, implant-wise, their fear has made them make incorrect decisions ever since. Uh, politically, internationally, wars that take place on this planet now are not justifiable. Putin didn't check Ukraine, Ukraine because it was a threat from NATO. There never was. It's all in his own subconscious fear. The two countries he wanted to do this in Ukraine to threaten them so they wouldn't become part of NATO are now NATO. Finland has a thousand mile border with Russia. That's NATO now. Sweden too. Backfired. When people make decisions on earth like political leaders and religious leaders are doing now, they're always making incorrect decisions. There is no right decision can come from that. It's negative. It has negative repercussions in space time. I'm sharing this with you to bring you a little bit more up to date about what we're doing and why. Everything that's ever been done by people to people to animals, the plant, the ecology, the water, the air in 65 million years since the major big dinosaurs were made extinct intentionally. Everything since then that's been done is still stored in the atmosphere of the planet in the H2O in the atmosphere and in the ocean. It does not go out in space. The vacuum of space is not a vacuum. It is an omnipresent single power. What they used to call dark matter is not dark at all. They know it's an incredible power. They just don't know how to access it. They know there are parallel and higher dimensions, but they don't know how to access it. They can prove it mathematically. Races from the stars, where we all came from, 
understand how to work with it. It powers their anti-gravitic engine technology. In other words, an energy that is non-nuclear or non-atomic has to be worked with for us to advance because that energy out in space that is moving through our atmosphere as well is what people on Earth call divine spirit, but it doesn't call itself that. This is all Earth-based stuff projecting theory and belief out there without experience by people teaching them this without their own experience. And this, this whole thing of tyrant kings and queens and all that was not originally developed on this planet. It was imported. It's very ancient. Implants cannot be removed on planet Earth in its atmosphere. That is not possible by anybody that's implanted that has a subconscious mind. Because we're not meant to have a subconscious mind at all. That's normal. The beings I work with do not have subconscious minds. They were never implanted. They were never born on Earth. Some of them are thousands of years old. They have four-stranded DNA as humans and humanoid. The telomere at the end of their DNA do not shrink when the cells divide. Those are switches. Biologically, the DNA, the what we call genomes, is over a billion mapped out where supercomputers are switches. They're accessed by precise sound frequencies. You turn on a certain one, the telomere doesn't shrink. You don't age. That would be disastrous for people on Earth because there's 8 billion people here and it's way overpopulated which means the place would just be overrun with people. People in other worlds do not overpopulate their planets. They have a limit of 500 million. And they're very strict about this because the people don't have to be policed. They all know it. They don't need police forces to regulate them because they know who they are. Such beings leave their bodies consciously way ahead of and go to where they're coming to before the ships catches up with their body aboard. The beings that work with implant removals do this in space in the pure hue, in the omnipresent power, because you cannot bring any negative nature to it and it cannot be recorded there. If people knew this one secret alone, life on Earth would change overnight. But they have to know it through direct experience. It can't be t um, information, entertainment, or anything like that. It has to be direct experience. So, so where's the secret? I'm sorry, Scott. Yeah. Where's the secret? The secret? secret? The secret you just mentioned, what is it? I'm not sure I'm knowing what you're talking about. Let me go back through it. So, like, the secret... The only known. thing that hides the secret, let me put it this way, the only thing that hides the secret of your own knowing is subconscious fear, nothing else. If okay. we want to know things again, we have to get rid of anything subconscious that influences our decision making. Earth's atmosphere and its people are just stuffed full of fear of the present and the future. And the origination of those fears did not occur on this planet. It occurred before they were forced to be born here with no memory. This was not some God's will. Behind it all, to have responsibility and freedom. Total responsibility goes with total freedom. One of the requirements we have is that we must know all life in the multidimensional creation. Because we are meant to be conscious, trustworthy co-creators with the source itself. That is why we exist. That is our destiny. There is only one answer to this. It cannot be avoided. We have always been meant to be conscious co-creators with the source. We started out that way. We're meant to return to that. And this is something can only be done as a person is freed from fear because there's only one thing that anyone ever has to drop in entire billions of lives on multiple dimensional levels. Just one thing only, fear. Fear is not a normal human emotion, it's, it's artificial. It affects the nervous system. It has a reaction of dread and trauma and sweats. And this is all nervous system, system reaction 
created by the influence of something that people don't see and don't know and don't remember. When they're on Earth, in this atmosphere, growing up here, they are trapped. Not permanently, but you could be compelled to reincarnate for a thousand lives because fear drives people to seek a false security in bodies. We've never been one of these ever. We've run billions of them. Some of them last for thousands and thousands of years in other world systems. The technology to purify Earth's atmosphere, of all the stuff that's stored in it, Earth's oceans are depleted. It means on a normal world, those oceans should glow a foot above the waves. Water has the ability to store a large volume of the omnipresent power that surrounds this planet out in space. If you look at a Google image of a, um, for instance, this will be very important. I should just do this. I want to show you guys something. We'll go out here and we'll Google. As you can see, this shows you an electromagnetic field streaming around the Earth. This is known. This energy that comes out the south, goes in the north, all these different images of it, is made of the first half of the word human or hue. That works through the pineal gland in the center of the human brain. And we'll get into that. This field of energy that you see around the Earth is identical to the field of energy that is around that, way outside of it. The same field of energy goes out of the bottom spine, circles the body, comes into the top of the head. It is in that field where implants are, not here. And not in the atma itself, not in the, what you are as a being. This is non-nuclear, non-atomic energy. It comes from source. It moves and has its being and travels the universe on the omnipresent power that it is also comprised of. There are no limits to the speed of light. There are no limits to gravity or, or black holes or, or dimensionality. What we are can move through the entire universe, and we've always been like that. But these, hey, Scott? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just have a question. The, the implants that deal with fear... Um, when were they installed? Like, Before what, you were born? Okay, so they were installed uh, before this life, before I inhabited this lifetime. Correct. Got it. And why does and, anybody wake up on earth and grow up going, I don't know how I got here, who am I, who's God, and what blah, blah, blah. They all knew it. Right? Yeah. We don't have to evolve in the future to become something higher, both evolutionary as human bodies we run or as the Atma. What we are, that is already perfect. It cannot become what it already is. That's impossible. But we have to wake up what it once knew. And the energy moving through the solar system now, which is something entirely new, in that omnipresent field or sound, has a first sound, it's a first Word is it was a, actually an original sound, which was used to build things. We're comprised of the same source energy that built the universe. If I asked all of you how old you were right now, I'm not talking about your frickin' body. How old are you? If you were there as that, in the beginning, above the void, in the higher realities where there's no negative nature, which is true, then you were there before the lower worlds were built because there's no time and space there. No planets, no moons, no suns, no stars. They're unnecessary because there we all emanate our own light. Things are held in place there like land masses and by beings. There are beings in the universe called silent mentors. They have never had a direct relationship with beings like us, Atmas. They are mechanics of creation. They hold together galaxies and moons and suns and stars, electromagnetic fields. They police the different dimensional doorways between the realities, and they've always been there. They have unlimited freedom. 
They can move anywhere instantly across time and space from the highest to the lowest world and appear as a bottle cap on a table and you'd never know it. They don't interact with us. At least they didn't until recently. So one of the things we'll do when we go together after this journey on a more long distance journey, hopefully the next one in English will be to go journey to source itself. Nothing takes the place of going into the heart of all that is and bringing back the awareness of it to the life you have on earth. It changes everything, and it's meant to do that. Consider how many billions of years you've lived running bodies on all these different planes, and you have. Even if you don't remember any of them. And as they are recovered, you have access to the wisdom, technology, and the consciousness, the length of lives, the type of bodies, that you had. So secondary implants have to do with not just getting rid of the program that's negative, but the life that it was covering up. These journeys we're doing right now are not done for most people because practically speaking, as one person, I can't take hundreds of people on a journey and show them three lifetimes per person through the journey. It would take days. When those groups are smaller like this, this can be done. I think it's done for people who have the potential to make a difference. If fear is removed from your life, what wakes up means you become a co-creator to help be part of solving the problem and not part of, become the solution instead of the problem. This means we have to accept our responsibility at source itself for being a co-creator. We were meant to be custodians and caretakers of these world systems. That is not what people on earth are doing. They're abusing everything every day of their lives, creating an effect in space time that works according to the law of physics. Every action creates an equal and opposite reaction. If we put out fear, if we use this, what people call the imagination, influenced by subconscious fear, it's gonna create two opposing forces. One good for ourselves and our family, one fear of the present and the future. They are in opposition and they neutralize each other and ground into the water on earth. So people stay stuck here. They're supposed to operate their ability to see into the multiverse, which that, the Atma does, spherically. And what's contained in that Atma is the ability to circumnavigate creation. It's all in us already. I can't give that to you. But it means a lot of that stuff is turned off or is dormant for one reason or another. Going all the way back to the time when you first stepped over the void and came to the lower worlds to run bodies which we were supposed to bring back to that source to help make this lower universe better. In several hundred billion years, that has not been taking place. So the experiment of evil, evil and good is a failed experiment. It works so well it trapped people in the lower worlds so gradually, so subtly, they don't remember how to get back. The information, the way to do it, is still in them, but it has to be recovered somehow, some way, by some miracle. You folks have to cross paths with it. All I did was make it available on this planet. You are the ones who have the courage to step beyond the fact that you're implanted despite being implanted. This is remarkable. People in the West, where this work's coming back to finally after being in Thailand and Asia and benefiting those people in, in wondrous ways, is finally coming back to the states where people seem to be more mindlessly entertained, more thoroughly than anybody else on earth, more distracted. It takes a certain amount of awakened courage, which you've all had anyway, to, to have control over these implant effects, enough to step forward into this. This is what you have. You have it. I didn't give it to you. The truth is the Atma, what we really are, has always had mastery over any form of negative nature, anything in the lower worlds. But if we've been terrorized and implanted and made to doubt and fear this, then we can't access this. Because the omnipresent power that supports everything we're made of does not work with negative energy at all in any form. It supports good and bad that people put out, but
but it does not work with it. It starts to work with us in a more universal guiding kind of way when it begins to see that we're ready to return to our responsibility. We created this, these worlds of positive and negative and good and bad, the failed experiment. What is underway now in the worlds above the void that is already created and moving into these world systems is moving in a new way that it never did before. It's designed to move in one way onward and upward. So when we start to cross paths with this in this way, it is not reversible. I mean, it's not reversible. Which means, that sooner or later, you're going to get back to source and wake up this form you're running on this planet and the bodies you're running in the different dimensions above, below the void. There is an astral plane, a causal, a mental, etheric plane. These are all different levels of different time rates of molecular matter stacked on top of each other. The physical universe has 144 parallel dimensions in it before you even get to the astral. The galactic interdimensional alliance of free worlds is something that was established in this galaxy, the Milky Way, half a million years ago. It's located on a planet called Zetronami 1 near the galactic core. The beings there travel the stars even between galaxies. But they have not themselves, as paradisical as their planets are compared to Earth, been going above the void. This is the problem. They went through a change fairly recently that got them more interested in looking at Earth. And the people that are stuck there unconscious, they begin to realize this is where some of their relatives and friends were placed without their permission or knowledge. So they have a vested interest in helping people on Earth discover or recover who they are and to transform the planet in entirely unexpected new ways. And it requires that we be boots on the ground to do it. We're still part of the co-creative process in the higher worlds. We never left. The Atma is multi-dimensional capable. It functions on multiple levels. It runs bodies on numbers of levels. And you have all been made to forget all about that. What people call their higher selves, which means a little higher heavens like astral, causal, mental. You've got a life you're running there, separate from this one. One Atma runs at least five. But its origination point is above the void. There's no negative nature there at all. Our true nature is that. We need to discover how to, we need to go through the journey to bring that here. Because when we do that, we immediately start to become a co-creator with that source and we're part of the solution instead of the problem. That all makes sense to everybody here, right? Correct? Yes. Perfect sense because you're awake. It's, it, it can't make any other thing. It's truth is truth. It, it's true for everyone or it's not true at all. Uh, John, I have another question. Um, why were we placed here? Uh, we were placed here without our consent. Correct. And um, in a previous practice I was involved in, it's been mm -hmm. said that Earth is a prison planet. Well, in a way, yes. But there are a few other worlds as badly backwards as Earth, but not many. Earth also had a problem in that its poles would flip overnight every 100,000 years like clockwork, wipe out any civilization that developed there. This Ice Age thing is not a long process, which they teach people in theory only. They can't prove a damn thing because they don't remember the experience. Those polar flips take place overnight. Life is wiped out here. Continents sink, oceans rise up, a floor of the oceans create new landmass. It's, it's, you wouldn't survive it. The earth of the world is fine. It doesn't get killed or destroyed from this. And then earth has to be recolonized. Some people leave under treaty. Tyrants were allowed to bring their slaves under treaty that came about at the end of a war half a million years ago that involved earth like a Switzerland, hands off. No race has been allowed to dominate this planet. That's obvious, but they've been allowed to have small colonies here and then they were kicked out after a time. They couldn't stay for much. They would mine, they would do things. Samaria was a reptilian mining colony, period. Mayan, Aztec, these people were brought here to do mining, to do the dirty work. 
controlled through corrupted priests, cut people's hearts out. You ever notice what history is taught to people in schools on this planet? It's all tyrant kings and queens, murderers and thugs. That's our wonderful history. People are not taught the wonderful civilizations that have existed here like Lemuria, which was destroyed half a like 100,000 years ago, which is where the beginning of the Emerald Doorway book begins with the Galactic Alliance back then. The Savior's Agenda book and all these books are based only on my direct experience. They're published in two categories, body, mind, spirit, UFOs, extraterrestrials, nonfiction and fiction, action, adventure, to tie things together. That's how they're published worldwide. I couldn't publish them as nonfiction. I'd have people at my door wanting me to give them a free spaceship ride first thing without earning it or even knowing what they're doing. People are brainwashed to want mindless entertainment. They want a magic wand waved over their head to give them back the responsibility they should co-create getting back themselves. That's what you're doing. Make no mistake about it, you are. <laughs> I get a kick out of it because I know what's coming. The process of leaving the body is exactly the same that you put it in every night. You leave the body every single night. Everyone does, even terrorists. Their imagination, what they think of, how they visualize things, or what they tune into, rather, that's in existence, is negative. They carry out negative actions based on fear that drives them. When people go to wars on this planet in a military-industrial complex society, which it is, that has no future. There's no such thing as a for future survivability of life on this planet in a military industrial complex. It's a dead end. They can't go anywhere because it's negative and it produces repercussions in space time. The yin and yang symbol, you remember the black and white circular dots, sometimes fishes circling around each other you see from the east? It's surrounded by something else. That's the positive and negative, the poles of energy that moves into the lower worlds to create lower dimensional reality. The omnipresent sound, the first sound, the omnipresent power, or the hue moves through it and supports it all. And in the beginning, reptilians and greys and tall whites and all these other beings were vegetarian. They weren't even, they weren't at war. This took place after they were brought into existence by the say rays, these body forms, raised up to a point where the Atma could run much higher faculties of awareness through the forms, and the say rays disappeared. It was about 10 years ago that they resurfaced, after all this time, because they went through a change that was new. They got motivated to meet with the Galactic Alliance Council. They got changed. Something else is going on now in the worlds above the void that never occurred before hundreds of billions of lower world years. Something that cannot be reversed, something that cannot be altered by negative tyrants, technologies, governments, or anyone. And it's moving in one direction through our solar system. The end of the Mayan calendar, December 21st, 2012, according to the Mayans themselves, was never about an Armageddon. That was created by Christian archaeologists that met them and then Turk tried to force it into a Bible picture. It doesn't fit there. It just doesn't. They interpret it as the end of one calendar, the beginning of a new one, and the new one says it's will be it is they say it's the end of evil as an experiment on Earth. They're not sophisticated people. They don't quite know what it means, but it's and, and the and the what Scott, I'm sorry. The Mayans. Yeah, end of sophisticated, what was it? Calendar marks the end of what? The new calendar that began after the end of the old one, which is the 25,000 year calendar that predicts the future, which is yeah. extraterrestrial based. The beginning of the new one, as they say, means the end of evil as an experiment on Earth. Oh, okay. Is it in the front of the Savage Agenda book? It's right there. Yeah. Plain sight. So it's good to know this stuff because where we're going, 
When you put the body to sleep, you leave it. But no one's taught on earth to bring back or use higher faculties to bring back where they go. Most people identify with the body as who they are, so they go unconscious with it. It's not natural. It's not normal. It's completely backward and abnormal and isn't normal in the way that most beings out in our own galaxy work. There are 80 races coming to this solar system and have been since we started setting off nuclear bombs in our own atmosphere. There are no ones allowed to come here, big cockroaches and ships and blow up our cities. That's Hollywood. The good thing about Hollywood is it gets people aware to think outside the box, to imagine being part of a greater universe. This is good. The negative nature of what makes them make decisions on Earth is not good because it keeps them grounded here. People on Earth that develop this idea that there's a limit to the speed of light, we're looking at it with physical eyes. There is no limit to the speed of light. It does not take billions of years from light from other galaxies to get here, for one thing. And people that travel in anti-gravitic propelled ships understand how to work with that power out there to propel their ships. They do not use radioactive isotopes, man-made, or new, like anti like uh, radioactive warp cores in Star Trek in the future that produce pollution out their tailpipes. Nobody works that way. Nobody flies around the universe in such things. No one's ever going to go to the stars in, an, in a, a rocket ship with explosive fuel They'll never go fast enough. It'll take several years just to get to Mars and back. And people cannot survive in zero gravity without artificial gravity. That is impossible. They atrophy. They have neurological problems. A person in one experiment between Russia and the U.S. sent up an astronaut at the space station. And the one from the U.S. had a twin brother so they could monitor his biology. They stayed there a year. You might remember this. When they came back, they had lost body mass, calcium, had neurological problems, and they had to go through a lot of therapy after that, which proves you cannot survive in zero gravity. You have to have artificial gravity under your feet, or you won't survive a trip to Mars and back. People on Earth know about artificial gravity, classified people. But I'm not telling Elon Musk that. He doesn't know about that yet. He knows their artificial gravity has to be part of that somehow. They're not going to survive the trip. So this is something that two programs produced on Earth. One was public, that was NASA. One was classified as a classified space program that's been running ever since. The two did not mix. The announcement of the U.S. Space Force by Trump when he was president is just the beginning of disclosure. It already existed. I want to tell you this because it's part of bringing up where we're going. When I send out this sound, it affects the pineal gland in the center of the brain because that's the gland through which you run the body. There's an energy beam from the white core of what you really are that powers or runs the body. Bodies do not run themselves. You disconnect that or leave and the body drops dead on the spot. It can only run from you, the real you. And we once knew this quite clearly, how we run bodies and that we are not them. So knowing this is extremely important. When I send out the hue, you've probably seen some videos of me doing this. I'm not doing it alone. There are beings of very great technology, masterful beings I work with, that do this with me. And the reason for that is to set up a corridor between the physical space of the omnipresent sound and the source itself. We bypass the lower planes where the illusions are much greater and the next lower heavens, you might say, above the physical before you get to the void. So we set this up first by removing secondary implants. And then we go on more long distance journeys to reacquire turning on those higher faculties in what we are that we once knew how to use. Anybody have any questions so far? Because we're about to begin. Do we need to have our eyes? Do we need to have our eyes closed or anything like that? Well, I would say if you're advanced enough to have your eyes open and see what we're seeing while you're seeing your environment, then keep them open. But 
It helps to shut the eyes off because it shuts off that part of the brain that allows the negative energy that's programmed in Earth's atmosphere to come into you and affect keeping on what's called the primary implant. That keeps people stuck here. Okay. So when we close our eyes, and let's say you close your eyes, you imagine going to the store, going to the beach, going to the market, you first see it, and then your body follows. This is true. The imagination that you're seeing this with is not made up in the human brain. They're teaching people all wrong this way. The human brain does not have a motion picture camera in it in the brain cells to project an image on another brain cell. That's not where imagination comes from. We see things, what we call imagination, from that, working through the pineal gland running the brain and body. So when we start shifting our imagination out into the universe and embracing a greater God, shall we say, and, and being able to wake up the ability to move amongst the stars, other dimensions, while we're running body, bodies, this is what enlightenment really is. And we have to bring it back to the one we have on Earth or it doesn't get here. So we want to wake that up. Imagine someone you respect, you love, you're grateful they're in your life, a person, place, or a thing. It can be any of those. But it needs to be something that's genuine. So when you imagine it, it makes you smile inside. It could be a dolphin. It could be a waterfall, a hummingbird, each other. It doesn't matter. It's purely constructive, positively constructive, upward and onward moving in velocity and character. That opens the doorway through the pineal gland and it connects an energy being to the core of your being. But because of my voice, the telepathic nature of this and who I'm working with, your secondary and primary implants are kept turned off. They're not on at all. No negative influence. There is a man and a woman from another world standing beside or behind each of you. Shantiol and Tomaltiol are extraterrestrial names. Dantian and Lamtian are also the same. They would appear to be beings, oh, maybe 35 to 38 years old, about six feet tall, long hair to their shoulders, slightly bigger eyes than Earth humans, four-stranded DNA, human. Make no mistake about that. They have say raised DNA in them. So do reptilians and greys and tall whites and mantis and nordics and everything you've ever heard of, and most of which you have not on Earth. Say rays were responsible for seeding and developing higher genetic forms like this throughout many galaxies, they did, and they're human. They did not evolve in our galaxy. They immortalized their physical form over a billion years ago. Not in the way you might think. They evolved to a point where they could dematerialize their physical genetics and store it in one of the teardrops, one of the golden teardrops near the white core of the being they are. And when they need to manifest it for a purpose, they draw on the one present power and it manifests it on the spot. They utilize it, dematerialize it, store it. They don't have the burden of pushing around a body, feeding it, or having it go to the bathroom. We'll be meeting with Ambassador Torellian of the Say Rays when we go up above into Earth's, outside of Earth's atmosphere in space. This is easy. All of you know clearly how to visualize going to the store, taking a trip, going to the beach, going to the mall. You first see it. The difference is when you focus your attention out in space to other worlds and other planes and other times and other dimensions, the same process is involved. So we want to begin to embrace the greater God in the entire multidimensional creation. The Atma, what you really are, is capable of doing this. It already knew how to do it billions of years ago. It isn't lost, it's not gone, it's just either suppressed, there's fear in the way, or we've left some of those turned off because maybe a billion years ago we blew up a planet by accident. I'll give you an example. The guilt that we developed out of that, if you're a kind, loving being, which we are, 
you might close off that higher faculty and then it makes you more vulnerable to make more mistakes and then another faculty and another one and another one until you end up on earth vulnerable to someone to get killed and stuffed in a body and implanted against your will just out of vengeance because they lost a war half a million years ago. This has been going on for 500,000 years. It is coming to a permanent end. Out in space. So it can actually come here. When I send out the hue, I'm going to do it on successively higher tone levels. What is taking place, which you'll discover, is that a vortex is being opened in space from the physical universe, bypassing the lower planes. It goes above the void to a realm where this being named Satnam, which means true name, first sound, first personification you'll ever see in some physical form, but he doesn't have a physical body. He's an atma like us, much brighter and larger, the same. This is a being who runs that particular first realm above the void, where energy is pure positive. There's no negative nature. We, we work with him in order to get permission to go back across that void. They don't allow anything negative. You can't even bring anything negative into the void itself. It does not fit. Cannot go there. So we have to go there as what we really are unaffected by fear. I will begin those tones now. You doing we're actually connecting the core of our being as a spherical atma theta soul whatever you want to call it has a real structure all those teardrops are faculties already recorded in them as the way to explore the universe and go back home this is innately within us this isn't something you need to acquire in the future some lofty time in the distant future where you will have enlightenment and acquire a higher nature and all that. First, the higher nature needs to be recovered. And then the wisdom that goes through it, that flows through the you these days, 
provides us with the wisdom to keep what we get permanently. That's what these are about, these journeys. They're focused on the well-being of all life on earth. No one accepted. Because there are no enemies. I don't create opposites through this work. Nobody interferes with my internet. No men in black come to my door. No government calls me up and threatens me, says stop doing this, because it's good for them too. Classified people watch these journeys. Don't kid yourself, they do. Some of the most classified have met with extraterrestrials from other worlds over the last 70 years here and there. And they've been told they have to deliver true disclosure to the world's people now or it will be done for them without them. Very embarrassing to world leaders if everybody on earth finds out life has been kept them from other worlds that could benefit them. It's important to know this because we've never been alone in the universe. None of us originated. There's a man and a woman standing beside each of you. Behind Vicky is a being, being a man and a wife, a couple, named Chantiel and Tonatiel. Behind Dave is a couple named Dontiam and Lamtiam, D-O-N hyphen T-I-A-M, extraterrestrial, mainly Pleiadian, but not from the Seven Sisters, the blue hot white stars people can see with the naked eye from Earth. They're from thousands of light years like beyond that in world systems past that area, which is part of a bigger constellation. They're human. They have lives much, much, much longer than people on Earth. And they're able to move, they're able to put their bodies asleep aboard a ship and stand beside you, projecting what looked to be a 36-year-old man and woman You okay there, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. My my dog my dogs my dogs beside me, so Okay, good. I'm That's really great. enjoying I'm really enjoying this though. By your dog is gonna be benefited from it too. You wanna to know why? There's an atlas just like you hovering above that dog running it right now. Yeah. Changes everything when you begin to become aware of this. I'm glad he's there. I'm going to read something to you because there's also another man and woman behind John and a different couple behind you, Frank. They're part of the Galactic Alliance. Yes, they know how to leave their bodies. Yes, they come here in ships. When you think about extraterrestrials, you might want to consider thinking about them as you and that they're more familiar with you than you are right now because they've never had this problem of being implanted in the first place. They can put their bodies to sleep shoulder to shoulder on a ship run by other couples <clears throat> and then leave that body and project a form that looks perfectly healthy, about 36, flawlessly beautiful and handsome. When you look up in the, with your imagination, which is just daydreaming, Imagine what it would be like for you to be floating near the ceiling as a spherical being you are, looking down on your body. It's the same way you, if you imagine going to the store, you're doing the same thing, only we're applying it in a different way. Now, if you see that, just imagine it. You're going to see there are two spherical beings hovering beside you up near the ceiling where you live. And they're also projecting a physical form that looks human, well-dressed. They have a single form-fitting fabric on, kind of a blue-gray material. They slip their feet into it. It has the footwear, everything. Now, the symbol in their right chest is a silver galaxy, has a four-sided golden pyramid with a quartz crown and three blue stars in triangular formation above the apex. That is a symbol for the Galactic Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds. It is not a federation. That comes from Gene Roddenberry and Star Trek fighting the Klingons and, and the Romulans and all that kind of thing. 
running around in radioactive warp core driven spaceships 2,000 years from now. There is no such future for this planet in space travel. Those kinds of materials that are deadly are outlawed. You can't use them outside of this planet. You got the countries on Earth thinking they're going to go out and fight over the spoils of other people's worlds. China, Russia, the United States, it doesn't matter. They're never going to be allowed to do that. Our solar system is quarantined, not by us. Understand this. They're here to keep us from annihilating ourselves. In the past, they would not intervene and planets would go up in smoke. And then the repercussions in space-time would bite them in the ass down through time as well. So things have changed out there. What you realize when you're hovering up by them is you're projecting a form, perfectly handsome, perfectly beautiful, trim, about 36. We all know how to do this. It's how we show ourselves to each other. When we're out of body, we have this form we present to each other that comes originally from above the void, like Satnam's image. We'll go explore that. It's not a physical body. It's made of energy. It's projection from the white core of the Atma that you are. What these beings are doing is keeping your implants turned off. It's easy. It's a piece of cake for them. This is just being out of your body in the same way you do when you put the body to sleep at night. Except because of my voice and this guided journey and who it's connected to, you remain conscious for the experience. This you have the ability to do. You've always had it. You just have to let yourself accept it back into your awareness. So without these implants on now, you're going to go through the ability to see yourself this way, show it to others, and go on this journey. When you look up, you find yourself at 10,000 feet in the atmosphere. There's two beings still hovering beside you. Still have a physical form that looks perfectly healthy, about 36, just like you. And then we find ourselves in space, out in space, outside of Earth's atmosphere standing in a circle of beings around a very dear, masterful friend named Ambassador Torellian of the Seyrays. This being shows you an 18 foot tall body, standing in the middle of a circle. It looks perfectly handsome like a Greek god, slightly pointed ears, bigger eyes than a human, a little bit bigger. Long, slightly wavy hair down to his shoulders and a little white tunic dress just covers his body and his bare feet. And he's standing there with his two thumbs up, the golden bright light around them, brighter than the omnipresent hue we see around us. Because out here, it doesn't look black to us at all. It looks like a brilliant white golden light everywhere, supporting all these little galaxies that float in it. They create electromagnetic fields that allow them to float in this other energy. The silent mentors of the mechanics of the universe maintain this system, actual beings maintaining it. They don't have normally an interaction with us at all. There's one place where we can interact with them and that is above the void. And there when we interact with them and other master teachers is so we can become kind of like a new prototype a new order of beings, kind of a mix of the unlimited freedom of a silent mentor and a master teacher that cares about beings. They don't care about us individually. That's not their bailiwick. That's changing up there. One of the things that silent mentors did recently, a few years back, was permanently end the cyclic flipping Earth's pose. They were moving dangerously over and one day they just flipped back to where they were in the 1500s. And we're golden age to iron age for this planet. That's done. To be honest, the most unreliable, dangerous, and unpredictable people in the universe right now are not out in space. 
Tyrants are controlled and being changed. It's the people on earth. Fear drives them to do just absolutely ridiculous things on a daily basis. Without thought, without responsibility, totally numb and unconscious, they don't know what happened to them any more than you do. In space, when you're up there, all you have to do is continue to visualize this. This is easy. You do it as easily as seeing yourself go to the beach or get in a car. Bodies are like, let's say, my Jaguar. You get in it, and you're this atma getting in the body or rising, letting it from above. It sits there and does nothing until you turn the key and take it somewhere. That's how bodies work. You imagine where you want to go, the body follows. If you imagine it going into the universe, if you leave it back on Earth in the sleep state, trance state we call sleep, what they call sleep, that means the body's put on automatic. The pineal gland secretes serotonin, which makes melatonin, which runs the body on automatic when you're gone. There's a pine cone in the Vatican, in the courtyard. Great big thing. It represents the pineal gland, and they certainly don't want to tell people what it means. That would lead to freedom and understanding. So when we're here, and you look around you, Charlene's 18 foot tall body, there's an atma hovering above his head, just like you. And up above him are a couple called drens. They're a silica-based life form. Very advanced, telepathic, photographic memories. They are first revealed in the Emerald Doorway book. They are also master teachers. I've known them for over 100,000 years. About three foot long from the tip of their cute snouts to the tip of their tail, which glows like bright crystal opal in bronze sunlight. And they're standing on hind legs that have a, a big toe and little toes and dexterous finger and thumbs just like a human, but they're not human. They have pale green skin. They are not lizards. They are the most courageous. They would die for you in a second to save your life. They have the best qualities exemplified of human beings and they're not even human. And these are friends of mine. You will come to know them. They can be trusted. To the right of this circle is a master teacher named Opelum. Opelum is about six foot tall. His pale blue skin, mm. jet black hair to his shoulders, emerald green eyes. He's holding up a hand. Mm. And there are webs between his fingers. He lifts his neck. There are three little slits up under his chin. You wouldn't notice otherwise. This being and his race are very ancient. The genetic structure is so close to humans on Earth we could mate with them, not that they would want to. They have one of the highest crystalline-based science in the galaxy. There are several other races with that kind of advanced systems. Opelum is a master teacher. The body he's showing you that looks to be about 36, maybe closer to 40, and so he has that body on Oceana, which is a planet on the other side of the galaxy. That's over 500,000 years old, unaged. The being towards Earth in this circle is Master Ramu. He has a maroon colored robe, a little rope belt, simple sandals, swarthy skin, jet black, short cropped, curly beard and hair, coal black eyes, He's holding a crystal staff in his right hand. It's energy. It's a symbol. It's about six foot tall. It's glowing with golden light. It has the symbol of the Egyptian onk for eternal light on top of it. Cross with a vertical oval hole. It's a tool. It's a device that he may work with you with someday. Because it does one function when two other crystals are placed in the eye of that onk. It's used to teleport a person from here to source itself. We do this another way. We don't need that crystal staff of his. That's for training certain other things. Out in space, you see a white golden light around you everywhere because you can. You can hear a sound that it makes, which sounds like gentle rumbling thunder everywhere around us. The 
sound the physical universe makes, or the omnipresent hue, the first sound behind creation makes for the physical universe. You can't be mistaken. It's not threatening. There's no lightning. And then you begin to see that there is these beings that are standing beside your physical body on Earth, are standing beside you up here in space, to your right and to your left. Benevolent, kind, very advanced. And I'm going to share something with you. Chantiel and Tonaltiel are from beyond the Pleiades and are Galactic Alliance personnel. They appear to be 35 to 30 years old, 38 years old. He is actually 368 year, year, Earth years old in comparison. She's 256. They live for several thousand years or longer. The telomeres on their DNA, this is four stranded, do not shrink when cells divide. First thing you need to know, because people on Earth were not running normal human bodies at all. They've been messed with. Everybody knows it. Certain genomes of the billion that make up the DNA are turned off like a telomere says shrink every time the cells divide. That is aging. That was done by tyrants long ago. He has long blonde hair and robin's egg blue eyes slightly larger than earth humans. She has long brunette hair and emerald green eyes. Dantian and Lamtian are about the same age. He has golden color eyes, not brown, and she has ruby red eyes that are slightly larger with yellow red hair. And he has okay. kind of a brown hair. They're very experienced, well-trained technicians among the other beneficial disciplines that remove what are called secondary implants. I don't do this. Understand this. I have a body on Earth that can be influenced even in the subtlest ways. I will not remove implants. I can. I have these people do this because they don't make mistakes and they were never born on Earth. They aren't influenced by subconscious minds. They don't have them. They're illegal. And they operate out of their bodies to remove these from you with your permission. When you look out in space, you see the, all the beautiful stars that make up the stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Big blue, hot, white, young stars. Big yellow suns, much bigger than Earth. Smaller ones, red dwarfs, giant red suns. Scientists on Earth today know that most of the suns in our physical galaxy just in the physical universe, or binary or trinary. They know that now. That means there are two suns, one bigger one, smaller one circling it, and often three suns with planets revolving around them. They know this. This just produces an effect where these planets with life on them do not have polar ice caps. They have a mean temperature worldwide. Planets are usually much larger than Earth, four times, five times bigger. Their moons with life on them and atmospheres are usually the size of Earth, maybe a little smaller that circle them. This is something you once knew. And I'm speaking about the physical universe now. There are 144 parallel dimensions of it stacked on top of each other, each running at a different molecular time rate. Advanced races know how to circumnavigate between them. When I say there are 450 million plus space faring races in the Galactic Alliance, they come from all those levels. It's not astral. Their ships don't go into the astral plane. That's made of an even finer matter. You have to go there and play in ships there if you want to do that. There are two six spacecraft hovering in an orbit around us. The reason Torellian's thumbs are up with a white or light or a golden light around him is because it's coming from above him, from past the void, it comes through his hands and he's creating kind of an oval, brighter light around us of the hue that exists above the void in the, the hue that exists on a lower frequency for physical plane manifestation. So we're being plugged into that. When they turn you around to face in outer space, you can see these six ships. We can see right through the hull. 
So blue gray metallic structure with three semispheric pods in the bottom and a little blue anti-gravitic light around them. We are Atmas. We can see right through the hull and we can see four couples in each ship. Three standing behind a semicircular control console. Multicolored, faceted, crystal gem-like things that are touch sensitive. And a couple sitting in a lounge in the back, shoulder to shoulder, apparently asleep. And then you realize when you look to your right and left, this man and this woman are showing you a physical form made of energy that looks human. And it's the one sitting asleep in the ship. This is how they work. And then you look up and see the Atma you are, hovering above this form that you show each other. And it looks like that that's behind my head and on the front of the Emerald Doorway book. And you realize you're seeing a, a golden energy field coming out of the bottom pole going in the north, just like the one that's around the planet. That's all right, I'll turn your mics off for the rest of the journey. You don't have to. I do this and forgot to do it, but I'll do it, except mine, so we get a better recording quality. The physical form you have there has eyes. You can see what we're seeing. If you can leave your eyes open as you're doing, Dave, go ahead, but it's better if you close them so that you can see what's going on. It's not the physical eyes that can ever see any of this. It's too limited. You can only see a small spectrum of light on Earth, and that's about it. This form you have has all the perceptions of a human body and many more. It's something you used to do to show people who you are as an individual, apart from the spherical energy you are, that is unique to your individuality. It does not age, it is not made of DNA, it cannot be killed or harmed or anything like that. Because your implants are turned off by the couple standing beside you, this you can see naturally, this is part of who you are. Something you know how to do when you're not influenced by fear. When you look up at this Atma, and you look out into this electromagnetic field that circles way around it, you're going to see three oval spheres of light about a foot wide in a triangular pattern around the outside of the Atma, not in it. Implants cannot be placed in something that is not part of the lower worlds, that is non-nuclear, non-atomic. Nothing, you can't blow it up. A hydrogen bomb could go up under me as the Atma wouldn't hurt me at all. Destroy the body, but not what I am. When you look up at it, you can see that these beings standing beside you are moving each of you up to the one out in the field, two-thirds of the way out around the outside of the outer layer of the Atma you are. And they're moving you right up to this wide oval sphere. Then the man and woman place their palms up, Chantiel and Tonal Tiel for Vicky, Don Tiem and Lam Tiem for Dave. The names of the others I don't disclose here, but the same beings with the same qualities and characteristics are hovering beside Frank and beside John of Light and beside me as well. When you look at the six ships, you're going to see 10 people, four couples in each ship, that are asleep in the back in a lounge and they're standing beside us as energy. There is an Atma, the real them, hovering above their heads just like it is above you. And they're placing their upper hand, upward turned palms up under this sphere. This little beam of light between it has been turned off and then it disintegrates and they're pulling this up to your face. And as you go into it, you begin to experience what was hidden behind death, torture, and don't look at this or we'll kill you. Artificial, not even your own experiences. For Vicky, when you go into this, you begin to see yourself walking along the strand of an emerald green beach. It's long, it's miles long, goes into the distance. 
The ocean is an emerald green color and it's glowing a foot above the waves like Earth's ocean should be, but they are depleted. The eight billion people on Earth unconsciously are not channeling the energy that would do this for them. On most of the worlds out in the galaxy, the waters glow, waterfalls, rivers, lakes have a glow to them. The people have a slight glow around their bodies because the water in their bodies is filled with this energy. It is energy that makes everything supportable. The atma, the bodies they run, the universe, the planets, the space, everything. And we are made of the very same core source energy. We always have been. And you're walking down this glowing emerald green beach. And behind you are pools that have a golden glow to them above a blue green water. And there's little marble, uh, kind of like blue stone marble, about a foot wide, a foot square, that are set into the ground that go between these plants that are, well, they're four, five, six, eight feet tall, big flowering bushes. And the dew drops on the leaves and the plant leaves themselves are glowing. You can see up in the sun, there's a trinary sun system. It's a three sun system. There's a big blue white giant. This is daytime. A big yellow sun, slightly smaller, further out, moving across the sky. And then a little red one in the distance, which is a red dwarf. It is a trinary sun system. In the distance, you can see th two domes covering a small city, not metropolises like New York set between at the base of mountains that run perpendicular, parallel to each other, rather. When you look up through the sky, which has this pale greenish glow to it, not like earth blue skies, almost like the aurora borealis behind Dave like that, but the whole sky is like that. The world is four times bigger than earth. It is located in the fourth spiral arm going left to right from where Earth is two-thirds of the way out in one of the spiral arms. And it's located halfway towards the galactic core. The body you are walking around in there, it has long green-blue hair to your shoulders. The eyes are golden with little blue pupils. Your skin is like an ivory color, like moonstone. The ears are a little bit longer and stand out away from the head. The little fins or fans, five little fans sticking out. You're about six feet tall. You look to be about 30. There's a couple coming towards you, two couples, two, two men, two women, walking down these blue stones from the dome cities, and you're meeting them. You have a Galactic Alliance uniform on. It's a blue-gray fabric. It has this symbol on the right chest area. This is 153,000 years ago. Many hundreds of thousands of years after the Great War that ended out in the galaxy half a million years ago. And this is a lifetime you lived for over 8,300 years. No shrinking telomeres. There's an atma, you, hovering above it. You know this. You can see it hovering above these couples that have approached you. You are speaking with vocal cords in a galactic standard language. You'd hear it like English. Then you're telepathically laughing about something because you have a photographic memory and are telepathic as are most human and humanoid races in the galaxy that are bipedal. The Sayers Ambassador Torellian standing in a circle, had a hand with his race in developing these higher forms billions of years ago in both the astral and physical realities. They had ships capable of traversing between them. I don't know of any race that can do that now. The planet is called Sansin Tall. It just means radiant nature. 
one of many millions of galactic alliance world systems, understand that human beings evolved billions of years ago and even out in other galaxies. It did not originate in the Milky Way either. The Say rays evolved in other galaxies, not here. The forms were running on Earth, two stranded DNA were supposed to be four. Something happened. Certain genomes in the DNA are turned off so that we can't access things easily. We get around this by leaving the body shut off in sleep. And the atma can turn on things. It's not the body that needs to be turned on. It's the atma itself. And you're suddenly outside coming out of this oval white sphere. And Chantel and Tonaltiel are just wiggling their fingers at this thing and it disintegrates into a vapor of blue mist becomes part of the white golden light around us now that lifetime is accessible for you because now it's conscious at least that part of it the implants gone can never be implanted in you again this is permanent now, one of the teardrops in the Atma you are is now on, so that memory is conscious. And we go to Dave. And there is a man and a woman, Don Tiam and Lam Tiam, standing beside him out in space. And he's looking up at the Atma he is, and looking in the same area. There's an oval white light there. There's a beam of light connecting them outside the outer layer of the Atma, not in it. This is where implants are, why they're so clever. The beings that do this have the technology to remove a primary implant, but that's not done at this time. The secondary implants have to go first because many higher faculties and capability of awareness surface in you so you can go much further, much more effortlessly. So as you move your face and they've got their palms up and they're moving this white sphere into your perfect form, Dave, you find yourself hanging out in the bridge control room of a 10 mile long spacecraft. It looks just like the one on the cover of the Sayers Agenda book, but this one's 10 times its length. It's designed for traveling between galaxies and across vast distance of stellar space in the Milky Way and between parallel dimensions too. To become part of a higher parallel dimension, they just raise the charge of the electromagnetic field around the craft. It raises the molecular time rate that makes up the craft. It simply disappears from here and becomes part of another reality. That's why people see ships blink in and blink out. This is what they're doing. Many races come to this planet they cannot be detected on radar unless they want themselves to be. They cannot be targeted or shot down. They're far too advanced. And they're not here threatening anybody. There's no evidence of that ever. If you're on this ship and you have a Galactic Alliance uniform on, and you're standing as the commander of this vessel, 256,000 years ago, long after the late, late, latest Great War. It's a lifetime that you did many explorations, scientific excursions aboard this ship, which is a science exploratory vessel. It's designed to contact not only the 450 million people or spacefaring races that are part of the Galactic Alliance, it's designed to explore other world systems that are advanced and help them be ready to join this Galactic Alliance. Earth was offered this in 1950 and turned down. They were offered again by other people who came here and they were turned down because of fear. Fear that they might be lying, fear they might take us over, all fear. There's never been any evidence in 70 years that any of them have retaliated for being shot at, some of their people captured and tortured in a sense. They never retaliated. And still, people on Earth don't get the message. So now, what is underway, as you're aboard this ship that long ago, it is an Emerald Star Cruiser, Class 2. Very long, very big. 
self-contained ecosystem. No open launch base on these ships. Blue-gray metallic hull. Just like the one in the Sailor's Agenda book, these oval vertical observation windows down the central from meridian of the hull. Bridge control rooms on each end because they're made for going through interdimensional doorway portals that exist in great profuse abundance throughout the multidimensional universe that were there when it was built. The races in the lower planes did not build that system. We did. Together. As part of Source. So understanding this stuff is not new to any of you. You're approaching a system that has a trinary sun system, which is a big yellow sun, a littler sun, and then a smaller yellow sun. And you're moving towards a world that's mostly water covered. There are no polar ice caps. There's a few islands around the equator. There are three worlds the size of Earth circling it. That is Planet Oceana. Planet Oceana is located on the other side of the Milky Way galaxy. It is in the third higher parallel dimension of the physical universe. Galactic Alliance race and technology can traverse there and go to that planet. So it's made up of world systems on multiple levels, but still within the physical dimension. Now you were going there to visit with Opelum, who's one of the master teachers standing in a circle around Turelian right now. Someone you've known for a long time. This master teacher. This beautiful, pale, blue-skinned, green-eyed, black-haired guy who's revealed in the, in the Parallel Time Trilogy. It was Sayre's ambassador Turelian and the Sayre's which inspired him to bring into existence the Galactic Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds, something that is not known yet in the UFO extraterrestrial and disclosure communities on Earth. They have no clue. Because that's centered on a planet called Zetronami 1 near the galactic core. On our longer journeys, we go visit that planet. And you come out of this white sphere and Dantem and Lamtem disintegrated in front of you. The deal is that that awareness of that life is now open to you. The negative aspects that kept you from seeing this lifetime that had no negative nature. You didn't have a subconscious mind in that life long ago. Now you can access it. What is done in removing the secondary implants is permanent. You are established in a higher form of the you from the worlds of the realities above the void. This is permanent too. And we go down to Frank. And Frank has a different man and a woman. One has kind of black gray hair, the male, down to his shoulders. He has pointed ears like Spock and blue within blue eyes. He has a kind of a green, pale green, like a moonstone too, very beautiful skin. The woman standing beside him has snake-like features, no hair, no scales, beautiful woman, dressed in a Galactic Alliance uniform, little ear holes for ears, snake-like eyes, a beautiful, kind of a multicolored skin. She's not a snake, just looks like the kind of a body a snake might have, a very beautiful one. Now, these are Galactic Alliance personnel that are very well trained. By the time they're 10 on their world systems, they have the equivalent of 10 PhDs to a person on Earth. You, every one of you, have a photographic memory. Frank has a photographic memory. He's telepathic. This is we 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 always been this way. We have this capability. People on Earth call it intuition, because they're afraid to use it. And that's all it is. So you're moving these these couple is moving you up towards this atma that you are, going up to this implant that looks like a foot wide oval sphere of light. And they're bringing it up to your face, this perfect 
36-year-old handsome man, and you're moving inside it, they've already turned off the secondary artificially implanted implants are gone. And when you're finding yourself, you're walking down a mountain path, and it has a green glowing moss, and it curves like a snake through these trees that have these big curved canopies on top. It's like a blue trunk with a red and green leaf pattern. They're glowing. The moss is glowing. In the distance in the daytime, you see a pale blue atmosphere, slightly green, and it's glowing. In the distance is a big bay, and there's a black sandy beach glowing, and a blue ocean with a luminous light a foot above the waves. There are several mountain peaks to the left and the right. You're walking along a path to the left side of about 5,000 feet up. Down in the valley is a snake-like blue luminous river coming from mountains, pouring down waterfalls out of cavern openings and emptying into the bay of this sea. When you look at the sun, there are three. This is also a trinary sun system. This is more towards the galactic core where the compact nature of stars are more dense. In the daytime on this world, if you can imagine how beautiful this is, you can see other blue and red and yellow suns in daytime because they're closer to them here. And as you're walking along this path, you realize that you are a man of about, you look to be about 40. Trim, perfectly healthy, you have a kind of a blue gown on, a Galactic Alliance gown, has a symbol on it, but it's the garb of a scientist. And you're walking into an open clearing that curves in a half moon bay shape around a stone fountain. And you're moving around this foam fountain and you have a body form that has jet black hair to your shoulders. You have pale blue skin. You have emerald green eyes. You're an oceanan. But this is not planet Oceana. You're on a sci scientific research journey here, which has to do with the way nature and the light of the hue works in the plants and animals here, which is a little different than others. And you're being met by six other people that are approaching you. You're all of the same blue race. Oceana is far away from this world. This is part of the Galactic Alliance. And you're discussing things about the nature of the light that's being poured out of this fountain upward that falls back down, and it circles in a blue pool. It's a golden light, but it becomes blue as it hits the ground. That has to do with memory. And you walk over to it with your companions, your eyes are blue with little green pupils. You trim about seven and a half feet tall. This planet is called Shrantalos. It just means nature of wonder. And you're simply going up and putting your hand in this water in this fountain, throwing it on yourself. It absorbs into the light around your body, goes up the top of your head. You look up smiling, goes into the white core of the atma because you see this here. You're aware of it. And it makes the field of energy around the outer core of the atma brighter. The energy from that fountain is linked to being above the void. This is long ago. Three hundred and seventy six thousand years ago. You lived a life there of over ten thousand five hundred and seventy three years before you voluntarily left that body and disintegrated, which is the way. Beings on these worlds, when they're born, grow to full adult maturity at six months or less. They don't live like people on Earth at all. 
These are who we were. This is who our neighbors are. Earth is in for some real shocking experiences. And then, Frank, you pull out of this thing. And this man and woman beside you, he puts it on his finger and spins it like a, like a basketball and it disintegrates and they start laughing and chuckling because it's very fun and uplifting for them to do this for others. Their motivation is not money or power or fame. None of their world systems grow up with any of that. Young people grow up in the Galactic Alliance and other world systems in many galaxies with the inspiration to create new ways of doing things that will benefit all life on their world and all life on all the other world systems they are in harmony with. This is our past nature, not future. So you have access to that lifetime. The implant that kept you from it because there was no negative nature in that lifetime, no war, no reptilians, no greys, nothing bad. And so you have access to it. And one of the teardrops in the atma is turned on. And you can explore it at your leisure later. But at least you can get to it now. Now I'm going to ask you, because this is taking some time, all of you out here, if you want to discover another life each, or stop at one, because this couple that's assigned to you now, or others that will be assigned to you, will help you every night when you're out of your body. When you put that body to sleep, what's coming through the hue down through Terillion, and I'll show you where that's coming from. Is inspiring you to send the hue out every night for you to go to sleep for five or 10 minutes, something so effortless. And all you have to do is call upon Ravu or Pelham or Etta and Din or Terillion or myself or the guides that are with you, Shantial, Tonaltial, Dantam, Lamtam. There are many. In fact, there's enough sign now to take care of all the billions of lives on Earth as this moves forward because it's required. It took years to get this ready. Decades. Lifetimes. We are, and have always been, meant to be co-creators with the source beyond our life because we already were. That we've been made to forget it is another story in how this happened. This is already closing on two hours. Do you guys want to continue? Just nod your head. Do you want to find another life or shall we do that another time? I'm leaving it up to you. Okay, you'll have to open your eyes now. It's okay, you can do both. We do think something called direct projection which allows you, once you're in this field, to move between here and back where we were in an instant. You don't have to go through that process again. This is natural for the app. So if I ask you to turn on your mic, you know where that little deal is down there? You don't even have to turn it on. You could just nod your head, I guess. Would you like to see another one? This is your choice. Sure. Yes? Yeah, I would. Frank, can you turn on your mic? Yes. And Vicki? Absolutely. We can do more. All right. Then it's going to be a long journey. I promise you in the next journeys we go on, they'll be about an hour. But because of the nature of this work with doing these three lifetimes with three people, it takes a long time. There's just no way to get around it. You need to see them experientially one at a time. So be with you close your eyes, you're still out in space. The couple is still standing beside you. You're still in a golden white light, Torellian still standing in the center of you. Now you look up with your eyes closed. I think it will help. When you look up and you see Eta and Din, the Dren, silica-based, not carbon-based, they evolved on planet Oceana where Pelham 
came from. Above him is a being named Satnam standing in space. Two gold bracelets on his upper arms, little white tunic dress from his waist down to his bare feet. He's bronze skin, bald head, gold eyes, not yellow. Ageless looking, looks to be about 36, muscular, bare chested. Above him is a very bright Atma hovering there. And above that is an hourglass vortex of golden white light whirling clockwise. Around it is a blue-green whirling luminous energy that looks like water, but it isn't. And on the other side of it is a pale blue atmosphere. There's a pale golden white light coming down through this opening, which goes from above the void, down through Satnam, down through Torelli, and out his thumbs, creating this oval field of light that's brighter with the hue than the one in space. And then Vicky, we're moving you over to this one that's on the right side, out in the field of energy, outside the outer layer of the Atma. And this same couple, Shantio and Tomotio, with their palms up, are moving you toward it. They're lifting it out of this energy field effortlessly and bringing your face up into it. As you move into it, you are on an island. It's an oval island. It has blue-green trees like palm trees with glowing big palm fronds on top. The ocean is almost a lavender color, glowing a foot above the waves. The beach has a lavender-like sand, round polished little crystals like amethyst, and they're charged, and you're just sitting on the beach, and you've got, you look to be about 15, maybe 14 years old, the Atma hovering above your head. You've got parents standing beside you. You're wearing kind of like a bathing suit type thing, but it has a little galactic alliance symbol on it as well. And you have yellow hair, down your shoulders, ears that curve forward a little bit, kind of a pale pinkish golden skin, lovely girl about 16, parents look to be about 35, 36. At this time, at your 15 year olds, you're over 80 some years old. This is a lifetime where you grew up learning the disciplines in biology and botany and astrophysics and wormhole or what you would call interdimensional doorway portal technology, anthrogravitic technology. And this is sitting on a beach on an island surrounded by an ocean. And behind you is an archway. It's an ivory colored stone. It has a blue wavering energy field in front of it. And you came through that with your parents to visit this beach. And there's a reason. This is also a trinary sun system. This has a big, big yellow sun, a small blue one, and another smaller blue one beyond that. There are three planets orbiting this planet in the daytime sky that you can see. And in the distance, you can see a continent way off in the distance circling around this island halfway. And coming up out of the ocean are creatures that are walking on two legs, right up out of the water. They look like they have ears, like the little fins on the back of them. They have a pale gray green skin. Obviously have gills, they are oceanic. There's an atma hovering above them. It's a couple and their two offspring. They're called Shrantalons, and that's just the name of a race. And they are very advanced scientists dealing with the characteristics of water, both how to program it and how to use it. They are also part of the Galactic Alliance and you are very good friends with their children. You go up, get up, and you start running and playing with them. 
diving in the water and coming out and standing in front of your parents. And then you all sit down on this beach and start conversing. Well, this is telepathic. You're sharing information. You're already very advanced at 16, 15, 16. Much more than a scientist on Earth would be. And you understand what you're sharing with these people. This planet is towards the galactic core in one of the other spiral arms. So in daytime, when you look out through this pinkish clouds, you can see other suns close to this planet. In daytime, it's just breathtaking. Which isn't something you can view from Earth. This planet's called Anantalis. Many names for many worlds. And so this is a lifetime you had that lasted over 7,600 years. A little, little over 350,000 years ago. And then you come out of this lifetime, out of this wonderful white sphere. John Teal and Tonal Teal are now tossing it back and forth. They're asking you to send the hue into it, which you do from the white core of your app, and it disintegrates it. You are co-creatively co -creatively involved in getting rid of this thing. And we go to Dave. And they're moving you up behind, up into the two-thirds of the way out of the electromagnetic field on the right side of the app. And they're moving you with this perfect male 36-year-old form. They're moving this form. The atmos hovering, is hovering above you. You're moving up into the energy field so you can objectively see what's taking place. What, that's what this body's for. The atma can see all this. But this way you get a tactile sensation of it. It's hard to explain why this is important. And then they move this two palms and they move your face into this lifetime. Now, as you're moving down into an atmosphere, you're in a kind of a craft, triangular shaped. It has an open, clear energy field over the top, like an electromagnetic field that would be considered to be a clear canopy. And there are numbers of seats, and you're in the front, and you're piloting this thing, and you've got some of your friends in the back seat, two seats, and you're moving this glowing blue antigravitic light around this hull of this triangular craft. It is an atmospheric craft. It's for travel around this world in a pleasurable way because you can disintegrate or you can turn off that energy dome and feel the wind blowing on your faces. It can go very slow. You can put the energy field back and it can dart at thousands of miles a second. It is an antigravitic propelled vehicle for atmospheric travel. It's not really designed for space travel. And you look to be about 30, maybe 35. And you have blue hair down to your shoulders. Green eyes, blue hair, kind of an olive, kind of an olive yellow skin. Regular air ears, they're not pointed or anything. You have a Galactic Alliance uniform on, so do the crew behind you. Two men, two women. And you are going to what appears in the distance as a dome city, sitting on the valley floor between two big mountain ranges. It has three pyramids in the back third of it, golden sided, quartz capped. There is a spaceport of types. Outside this dome, there's a big oval, blue disc one, two small round ones. There are two galactic scouts parked on it. And you're going to go down and land this craft in the larger oval. And as it lands, and these three pod legs come out, a seam appears in the side, the canopy shuts off, and you get up and walk down these steps and walk along this pure white marble floor. And it goes into a triangular opening in the bottom of this big clear pyramid. 
There are four fountains circling this pyramid. They have different colored water coming out of them. One's yellow, gold, and white. One's blue, one's green, and one's a yellow color, like a yellow red color. They are a type of device. They draw energy from the universe and distribute it through the atmosphere and water of this planet. This is a galactic alliance world system. And you are all scientists here. Your expertise, your field of exploration and interest is dealing with traveling between parallel dimensions, improving the technology. So that was almost 450,000 years ago. About 50,000 years after the Galactic Alliance was formed, there was no war. You're on a planetary system closer to the galactic core here and another spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy. And you enter that triangular opening and you're going inside this dome city. And you see a blue-green luminous lake in the center of it, a little half semicircular mountain range with waterfalls cascading down it, put there deliberately for the aesthetic pleasure of the people that work there. And you come back out of this oval white light sphere. And Dantian and Lamtian simply throw it up in the air and it disintegrates. And they start jumping, they do a little Irish jig type dance. It's funny. Et and Din are up above Ambassador Trelli and doing the same thing, and they're cute as hell. It's so fun to watch them. I love those two. They're just incredible. And they do this because it's so uplifting for them. Piece of cake, easy as pie, effortless. Remember, they don't have subconscious minds at all. No implants, no engrams, none of that stuff. They're not Earth people. Now you have access to that life. The terror that kept you from accessing it is gone. You can explore it at your leisure. The point of these lives and their revelation is so that you can have a higher IQ, a higher comprehending ability back on Earth and a body that never learned any of this stuff because you're gonna notice in the next few days, your ability to comprehend this is gonna go way up. A few days when you play back these journeys, you're gonna be going, oh shit, that's like I always knew it. That's what happens. That's only the beginning. Now in Frank, you've got another couple beside you. They're bringing you up to that field of the right side of the Atma and moving you up into that oval white sphere. And it's in their palm of their hands and then you just move inside it. You are walking along a blue, green, glowing river. It has trees like giant you. Uh, giant weeping willow trees with broad spoon-shaped leaves that are glowing. Of course, there's a glow above this highly charged water H2O on this planet, like all normal worlds. And you're walking with several couples along this path, and you're heading towards a clearing. And in the distance far off is an emerald green ocean. Emerald green, very vivid, glowing. The water in this river this, that you're walking along is glowing. The path is like a brown moss-covered path. The grass that's a foot high lavender grass on each side is glowing. You and your companions have a bit of a glow around you. You have bigger eyes than an earth human in these forms. And they can see in the dark or light, day or night. They have pupils that open up like a cat, but they're human. The skin is a grayish green color, smooth. You have longer fingers than a human on earth. 
very delicate. In this particular life, you're also wearing a Galactic Alliance uniform. This group is also scientists. More like botanists, plant people. And you're going up and studying the leaves on this weeping willow type tree and you're placing a hand under it and you get a communication between the hue in this tree and yourself. There's actually a respect there. In reality, you're a group of beings that have been responsible for maintaining the ecology and the charge of the hue in the waters on this planet. Big world, binary sun system, two, two worlds, planetary, planets revolving around it. When you come out of that life and out of this oval sphere, this couple disintegrates it, they laugh at it, and it just disintegrates. This is effortless for them. And the next thing you know is you have an awareness of visiting this life and exploring it further. The doorway is open. The science, the intelligence, the comprehending ability is also open to you. Let me go back to Vicky. There's one more implant here. We're going to go through all three. We might as well. We're moving you in this pure body form around the backside of the Atma, out in space, further away from Torellian, turning you around and moving you up to this last oval white sphere. This time they're putting their hands, palms up under your own hands, made of energy, of course, that look human. And you are reaching in and pulling this last one out, co-creatively involved in taking care of this problem. And as you move your face into this next sphere, you are flying through an atmosphere on a world and you're using what other people have seen in some of these journeys. It's in a Galactic Alliance Antigravitic Personal Transport Disk. It has a blue glow around it. Your feet are gravitationally grounded to it, your whole body, really. But you can move your upper torso. And there's three people, you, another girl, and a man, all about 25, flying on these discs through the air and doing loops and circling around, having fun and laughing. And then you're going down to land by the, by the shore of a lake. And when you land on these, they hover above the sand or the, the lake dirt, really, it's green grass. The outer rim comes down to the ground. It turns off, you step off of it, and then the top portion lowers and it creates a solid disc. It has esoteric symbols on it, but they mean something. They're like instructions. And then you and your two companions walk over to the edge of this lake that's glowing. It has a reddish green color to it and you're putting your feet, your bare feet, in the water, sitting on the edge of it. You all have this really bushy yellow hair coming down the middle of your back. Your eyes are blue with green pupils. The skin is like a pale green blue, almost like ivory. You know, you're about nine and a half, ten 10 feet tall, quite tall, Humanoid race, longer fingers, longer neck. You are in a kind of a single blue garment. It doesn't have a Galactic Alliance symbol on it. It's more of a, a scientist smock, I guess you could call it. Actually, there is a symbol of the Galactic Alliance, a little one on the back, the right shoulder. You're not here. You're here for the pleasure of it, and you're here to experience a lifetime that lasted 
10,783 years. Long lifetime. Some live longer, some shorter. And you became not only a Galactic Alliance pilot and a scientist with many hats. At this time, you contributed to developing a more advanced way of dealing with cultures that are less evolved, how to bridge them up higher. The Drens, Et and Din, who are silica based from Oceana, were made more intelligent and eventually became master teachers because of Opelum and the Oceanan scientists. When you come out of that lifetime, this time, because it's held in your own palms with their palms under yours, there's an energy that comes down from the source above Satnam, down through Torellian, right into this last secondary implant and disintegrates it into little whirling particles of blue-green light that become part of the white golden light around us. So you have access to this life. And we move over to Dave. We're going to go take this third one out that's in behind you out in space. It's behind where you are now, and they're moving you around it, turning you around, placing their palms under your palms, and you're lifting this last one out yourself. And as you move into it, you begin to realize that you are swimming under the ocean. The water is blue. It's luminous. You're swimming under the ocean with a group of 12 other people. There are dome cities on the bottom of this ocean. And you have blue skin. There are many world systems run by the Oceanans, not just one that I take people to so far. And this is something you're exploring. There are dome cities. All the dome cities, by the way, are ocean and technology. You'll find on many world systems. The transport tubes that connect the domes, they're ocean as well. You read more about them in the Parallel Time Trilogy and how they work. Because you once knew exactly how they worked. Long ago. So you're swimming down to the bottom of one dome. It has a little triangular archway. There's an energy field in front of it that you can just walk through, let you pass. And as you pass through this radiant energy about a foot thick, you're dry on the other side. When you come into this dome, you can see three little luminous lakes, oval, with different lights, uh, different colored light emanating from them. The three pyramids in the background, which are devices, and at the base between the three is a long ivory colored dome. These are research centers. In between the lakes in the center of the dome is a circular blue disc landing field. There are a dozen Galactic Alliance craft parked there. And in the middle, what's called, it's called a spectrum ship. It's an Oceanan vehicle. It looks like a cobalt blue sphere with big pyramids coming out of it. Tall, elongated pyramid spikes of different colors. And there's a hole in the side, a round one, and crystal-like steps leading to the ground. It's specially designed. You can find out about that in the Parallel Time Trilogy. Those types of ships were not shared with the Galactic Alliance. What they do is a bit beyond them. But you can find out about them in the Parallel Time Trilogy as well. It's on a planet called Cyphor. Cyphor 3. There are two other systems near the Sun system, which is trinary. No polar ice caps. Four worlds circling it. You can't see them under the ocean, but they're there. And so you could breathe underwater or on land. 
and that life. When you come back out of that life, out of this oval sphere, the implant that kept you from it is gone. You have access to it now. Then we go to Frank. And then Frank, with the people, the couple that's behind you are moving you out into the electromagnetic field around the back side of the Atma. It's further out in space away from Torellian. Still a white golden light around you everywhere. You're perfectly safe. All of you are. No negative nature in any of this. And this time, their palms up or under your palms and they're moving your hands and you're pulling this last one out yourself and moving into it experientially implants are off they can't prevent you they're turned off by these people until they're completely disintegrated so as we move into this last lifetime third one begin to realize that you are a boy of about 10 you have a pale green skin a silver blue type of hair to your shoulders Ears like Spock, but a little bit longer. And you're about six feet tall, but you're only about ten. And you have a pink skin. Handsome boy. You're standing in a long, green, four-foot-high grass field. It's glowing. There's a semicircular mountain range around you. No snow on the mountains. There are waterfalls coming out of cavern openings two thirds of the way up these mountains. They don't create waterfalls from snow melt. They come out of subterranean water and come out these caverns, drop as waterfalls, empty from a dozen different mountains in these rivers that become a long over lake and of course it's glowing too and you are with a class here and there's a dozen other students male and female and two taller beings a little over 10 feet tall they have silver hair to their shoulders ivory colored skin violet colored eyes the silver hair that looks like metal is soft you just know it they have longer necks and longer fingers and longer legs they are from a race called the Zientranamus and they are located on the other side of the Milky Way galaxy these are teachers on loan so to speak between a race that governs more a little more than half the universe and the Galactic Alliance. This is almost 23,000 years ago, pretty recent, because in time since then, these two collections of beings from both world systems are now working as one. That's helped make things possible for journeys like this. They have one of the highest crystalline-based science there is, so do the Oceanus. The couple that are standing before you are the, and I don't want to call them rulers because they're not timeless, but they do govern billions of worlds. And they're standing before this group of youngsters. The body forms they're showing you are three and a half million years old, unaged. You can see the Atlas hovering above them just like above these youngsters. They're not trapped in bodies. This is a very special couple. They stay together that long. There must be a reason for it. <laughs> you are on a world system in one of the spiral arms halfway out of it on the other side of the galaxy opposite Earth. You are in the Zientranamon world systems. 
the youngsters are from the Galactic Alliance. They're teaching them higher PhDs, let's put it that way. And so you were one of the youngsters back then. And in that lifetime, you lived about 12,060 years, something like that. Something happened after that where you left that body voluntarily. The body is dematerialized. It's not put in the ground or burnt or anything like that. Very efficient. And you moved on elsewhere to explore something else you were interested in. One way or another, though, you got caught doing something you were warned about. And you were stuck in a body here, just strictly out of revenge by a race that lost a war a half a million years ago. But now you're recovering this life for a specific reason. Two of the predominant races I introduce in these journeys are the Xeantronomus and the Xeantronomus world systems and the Galactic Alliance systems. Together, they actually run the whole galaxy. Tyrants like reptilians and greys and some twisted Nordics and things like that, they're corralled. They're being put through changes to end their tyrant natures. Put them back the way they were. Reptilians originally also were sponsored and developed by the Seyrays. Back then, though, they were vegetarians. They were completely different. When the Seyrays left, look what we did with it. It's a good thing that they've decided to change and become responsible for helping the younger races or we'd all be dead. This planet would have gone up in smoke in 1950. They tried. So now you are outside in your bodies in a circle around Torelli, and these guides are still beside you, laughing, chuckling, giggling. They can't help themselves. And you look up and see Satnam recede up into that vortex and vanish. You'll be seeing more of him. That's a certainty. These kinds of things are a difficult challenge for me to guide because I have to see something about your personal lives that's wondrous, uplifting, positive, constructive, no negative nature, and work with beings that can easily remove the negative implants in them. Primary implant, where is it? It's a pyramidal shape, four-sided with a quartz cap, sits above the north pole of the Atman, not in it, in the electromagnetic field, and one pointing downward. They contain a lifetime where you were killed and compelled to be in a body with no memory on this planet. They cannot be removed at this time on Earth or it would kill your body. You will co-create, each one of you, with what you're waking up to, you will co-create the scenario when we go and do what's called a primary implant review. A man named Virgil has been one of the first ones done in English that's reviewed it. This means you'll see what's in it. That primary implant effect will no longer bother you. You'll know what's in it, but it won't be removed. It just becomes a conscious memory. When the time comes, you'll find yourself sitting in a white leather-like chair. And beings that know what they're doing, that were not born on Earth, will help you to be free of a subconscious mind altogether. We're not meant to have one. This kind of thing takes place out in space as well. When the world's more changed and more acceptable to be admitted as a Galactic Alliance planetary spacefaring race, the technologies needed to cure disease, change the planet, eliminate its overpopulation by taking them to worlds in parallel dimensions like Earth that have been prepared for them. This is practical. The world has to change because if it didn't get intervened with at least to the degree that nuclear war was stopped, which is why I don't worry about it at all, then we would have succeeded in destroying ourselves on this planet long ago. Fortunately, we're not alone in the universe. This is something each one of you knew very, very well long ago. If you know this, 
just in the physical universe, then you begin to remember just how old and ancient you really are. Not as bodies, as the Atma. Atma is something people call us that looks like that, that know what it is, that weren't born on Earth, that understand this from birth. If somebody bears a child on another planet, they are communicating with this as a mature being before they choose a body. It's not like it's done on Earth. It's not like that at all. I wanted to leave you with that. This is a long journey, but three people, three lifetimes each. This is the first that's ever been done like this. So now, if you would, imagine being up near the ceiling with these two beings still around you. Just close your eyes for a moment. Just imagine it. Now, there's an energy coming down through you that comes from above the void. It's a white golden light. It passes through the atmosphere, all three of you, and this perfect forms you're showing each other. It goes through the body. There's an electromagnetic field around the body. These implants are gone. Passes through your form for your benefit. And then it continues out into the atmosphere of planet Earth for the benefit of others. It goes out into space and eventually finds its way back to the galactic core, the axis of the galaxy, which is a white golden light running up and down. It goes into it. It goes back to source. It's like the infinity sign. This one power moves through these doorways in the center of galaxies to other galaxies, to other levels, and keeps everything alive and supported. Something we all had a hand in building as source before the lower worlds were even built. So don't think that you can become this total super being enlightened in the future through some miracle. You already are this. The rest is about recovering what you were made to forget and then taking it co-creatively further. So when you're ready, open your eyes and turn on your microphones. And now we can turn off the recording, which I'll do now.